the toughest job in media? For good reason? Um, <laughs> Uh, I, think, I think anybody who, I mean, I see there are a number of people from media here today. Um, I think any job in media is tough. I mean, the challenges, the amount of choice. Um, I think uh, BBC has an extra um, uh, focus because it is funded by the public. Um, it is a public service broadcaster. Um, and because of that, the public scrutiny is um, properly intense. So I can remember when I took the role and I'd taken, you know, I'd always spent most of my life in the, in the commercial world um, and people talked to me about public scrutiny and I can just remember, you know, the, the next day after it had been said that I was, uh, I was the candidate was, uh, I think it was a media show and I heard my English school teacher, Mrs. Woods, um, who had taught me when I was 14 or 15 years old, um, commenting on me, and you realized it was just different. Um, and <laughs> so I suppose that's a very good lesson to anyone who has kids here to say, be really nice to teach her. Yeah, I hope um, she said something really nice she, about she you. Was, she was very nice. Um, so but, this was but, so I would say there's a public, there's a public side, but that's, that's re I mean, there is sort of that so side of it, but it's the fact that because everybody pays their license fee pretty much in the UK, people feel that they have a real right to comment and, and um, talk and discuss uh, the BBC. So I think that's a fantastic way to build accountability. But it, in addition to all of the other challenges of media, um, we have that. Although we have to say that one of the issues for a lot of media is funding and we have the huge privilege of that license fee to allow us to take risks and do things that others can't do. Well, a huge, uh, uh, the huge po uh, privilege of having that license fee, but also the the uh, the onerous um, challenge of having uh, 3.7 billion pounds annually in license fees. Uh, flat fees over the years and increasing competition from streaming services like Netflix. Now, Rona, you became the chair of the BBC Trust in October of 2014. This is a, a four-year term. And recently, the very future, uh, the oversight, the budget, of the BBC has been questioned by all sorts of, of controversy and challenges. Has it been tougher than you expected when you took this job in October of 2014? Um, I, I mean, I, I knew it was a big job and I, and I took it because I thought it was a job that mattered because I think having um, objective independent news and having uh, an institution like the BBC in the UK is important. It's not perfect and the public is very quick to tell us when we get it wrong. Um, so I, I, I joined, so for those of you who are not from the, the UK, um, the BBC runs by what they call a charter which it's given to operate for a certain number of years, typically um, around 10 years. And so I knew coming in a number of things. I knew that the charter was up for renewal and it ends, uh, the current charter ends in December of this year. So I knew that the focus would be on the future um, BBC and I knew that that would have a, a, a huge amount of, of, of public interest. Um, I also knew that the financial challenges, the, 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 uh, the whole um, economy and the challenges in the economy in this country added another dimension. Um, and I also knew that there were, there were concerns with the structure that was the governing structure um, of the BBC when I joined. But I joined with a sort of an open mind to say, okay, let's, let's see how, it, how you can operate it. I think most governance structures you can operate if you've got a, a basis of a relationship of trust and, and respect with the, with the key people. So I focused on that. Um, and then it was about working out um, what was it that the public really wanted? Because I saw that my role um, as the, the, the chairman of the trust, which is to represent license fee payers. So I was very clear that I was there as their representative and 
that was why we spent so much time finding out through questionnaires or research or seminars about what it was that the public wanted, what it liked, what it really didn't like, and what we had to do differently. And that really was the sort of the basis of the, the discussions leading to the Charter, which is, of course, for those of you who have not been, uh, haven't been clear about it, we have those discussions with government. What did you have to, now this is not completely wrapped up with a nice bow yet, is it? But what, what did you have to um, fight for and what are you most pleased in getting that you had to fight for and what are you most disappointed that you did not get? Um, if, if you, t at the beginning of the process when the charter was kicked off, so what happens is the government does a green paper, which is the potential things that it could become. Um, there were some very concerning ways there in terms of how the BBC would, would change its fundamental mission, would change the fact that it had broader public purposes, um, and that, that those, were, those, those were things where a lot of people publicly felt that, that were quite threatening. Um, I think that as we've gone through the process, a huge amount of work has been done. The public consultation, even with government, they've had 200,000 people reply to a very detailed questionnaire. Um, we've had 50,000 people, the largest ever sort of public feedback on such, such a thing in terms of those detailed questionnaires. Um, and we also had huge support from the whole creative industry. So the music industry, um, I can remember going and, and to a music event and um, they, they, the event was called Let It Beeb. Um, and um, the, they had, it was a fantastic event because they were basically saying, the BBC is, is, has one of these social purposes which is finding new talent, developing new talent and um, they, they, had this, they had Jake Bug who came along because he had been discovered by the BBC in the way that George Ezra and Sam Smith most, most recently have too. And he said he'd sort of sent in his, 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 his track to BBC. BBC um, took it on board, said come down for an audition with a few hundred other people. And he said on the same afternoon he got an email from um, uh, Glaston budget to saying, um, really sorry, you're not going to, we're not going to, to have your, your, your act. And then he got a call from BBC to say, we'd like to put you on the stage at Glastonbury. And he said his, 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 his career took off. So we had the music industry and, if, and the independent production industry saying it really matters to have a vibrant industry. Um, I think the other thing that I learned was that, the, you know, the, the, the constructive engagement that we had with the government was, was, a, was a really good one. So that would be what I was pleased about. We took the public information and the, the, the final thing that I would say is the public was very clear about where it wasn't happy, where it thought need, more needed to be done on efficiency or on portraying better the diversity, the rich diversity of the country. But they were also really clear, fundamental missions shouldn't change. It should inform, educate, entertain. It should continue to be a service that has something for everybody. Um, and very, very, criti very critically, and it's, it's really important for all the media organizations here, they really, really understood the importance of independence, the ability to hold to account, the ability to have creative freedom and that came through and that was respected. And so there were questions about the government there, actually having the, oversight the, over programming. The, which the, the, there were, there were, there were some suggestions. The, gov the, the, the public came back, 90% said basically keep the independence, that's the essence of the BBC. So I was really glad that was enshrined at sort of top level. It's not over, as you say. They, we've changed the governance structure, so we'll go to a more classic board structure. Rona um, will be beginning January 1st, I guess. I, the chairman of yes. the BBC, no longer the BBC Trust. And, and in terms of the independence, that's what we're saying. There is still some elements of the independence that, that we need to make sure are bedded in to any new charter, so that's the focus. Who has a question? Person. Oh, here we go. Here we go. 
Yes, please identify yourself. Oh, over here, okay. Yes. Thank you. Um, I'm Jenny Scott, and I, I sympathise with the pressures you feel from quasi-public ownership, because I'm the Executive Director of Communications at the Bank of England. So we feel a similar amount of public scrutiny and, and need to be transparent. But I wonder, from your personal perspective, whether you think that level of scrutiny is right for you personally, or whether you think it puts people off taking those top jobs, because I know you've got a lot of um, pressure from the Treasury, from the um, Select Committee, particularly from Margaret Hodge. Um, do you think, given the media climate here, that we're in danger of going too far, putting off great talent uh, from taking these important jobs? I mean, I think it's a great question. I have to say that before I took it on, I'd had a, I'd had a, a life in the commercial world, and um, there's been an element of public scrutiny sitting on a, on a public board as an executive director, but, but very different to a public role. Um, I, think, I think you have to go into it eyes wide open. That was, that was um, and I think you have to, you, you go in feeling that you have to be resilient, and I think that's one of the most important, one of the most important elements. And you have to really want to do it. So I suppose to my mind that, that the heart was, um, I, I can remember actually saying, to, I, before I took the job, I, I, uh, we have three kids. And I, I had been looking at chairing commercial organizations. And I'd been looking at the BBC. And I said to them, OK, so here's the deal. Um, I can either you know, go on to chair a, a, an organization, you know, our lives won't change very much, a little bit of more public scrutiny, um, you know, uh, uh, or, um, or I could do, you know, bigger companies, you know, you know, you know a, a, a lot of sort of positive profile, or I could chair the BBC, huge public scrutiny, um, really difficult decisions, um, decisions that a lot of people will disagree with, um, but you have to make them. And they said, well, you're not really telling us the whole truth. And I said, well, what do you mean? And they said, well, if that's the choice, why are you still talking to the BBC? Um, and so ultimately I said, because I think it matters. And I think that if I, and so I, I think I'd got to a stage where, you know, I, I, think, I think when you're starting a career, you're very much wanting to be and watching to achieve. And then you get to a stage where you actually really, really want to do. And that, that I think, is the stage that I was probably at. But I would say y you have to be prepared for that. Does it put you off? I think I, think I would, I, I think you, you develop a resilience. And now I sit back and say, OK, I'd made the decision. I'm doing it. Am I glad I did it? And I have to say, I absolutely am, because I think it makes you a, 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 I think it makes you stronger, and I think it makes you more able to take on other challenges, and that's what I love to do. I love that about being young when you're younger. Earlier in your career, it's about what you want to be, and later it becomes what you want to do. That makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, Rona, this last year may not have been your toughest year. I think maybe you tell us your toughest year might have been 2010. Mm -hmm. uh, Rona was battling breast cancer. Her brother died in an automobile accident. Uh, three young kids at the time, what, 2018, 15 now? So um, six years ago, what, we're almost out of time, but how do you look back on that and what you learned from that? Um, it, was, it was tough. I mean, it was a tough time. Um, and I suppose I'd go back and I'd told Patty at the beginning um, when we started speaking, when I was a very junior, um, executive at, at Bombardier, and we had this course on the balance of professional and personal life. We had the first session, I was in a room of men who were qu quite a bit older than me, and they left the room as one to go and pick up the phone to say to their kids that they loved them. And I can remember thinking, I'm not going to live my life, I care about doing something challenging, but I also, for me, wanted a family life. The afternoon we came back, they dried their eyes and everybody felt a bit better and they said, let me tell you, you can't have it all, but
but you can have a lot. But you have to decide where your priorities are. You can't have 100% in your hobby or your family and 100% in your job. But work out your boundaries. You have those options. Be realistic and stick to it. And so I had that advice from a 29, I was single, I was a sado, I didn't have a boyfriend, and, and uh, I, I, I went into my life, in my career with that, and I cared about the boundaries, and I cared about committing to the business, but also to my family. So when I got sick, what I realized was that the choices I'd made then, that prioritization, the things that really matter when you're sick or when you're, you're, you're really against it, for me, were about my family and that I had something positive and worthwhile to do. And what that did was just reinforce the importance of being clear about that. So when I talk to young women, I say, be really, really clear. Don't break those boundaries because you want to go to the end of your life and look back and say, you know, I had a good life and there's not, a, there's, there's, you know, there's, I don't regret what I've done. I didn't let down the people that matter to me. And it's about what you do, not just what you are. Rona, thank you very much. Thank you. This was terrific.